So who doesn't like free? I like free stuff and I like free web hosting. So today what I'm going to do is talk to you about how to use Publii, which is a static HTML generator and Netlify pages and use both of those together so you can host a blog or a website with a custom domain. So let's go ahead and get started. Publii is the tool that we're going to talk about today and it generates static HTML. So when you think of static HTML, think old school, web development from the very beginning of the internet, which was basically you created HTML pages, used an FTP program, pushed it up to a server and attached a domain name and boom, that's how you got your website, right? Pretty simple. Didn't have a database behind it, didn't have e-commerce. It was more informational, more brochureware, but for a lot of people, that's all you need. And I think for a lot of people today, that's all you need. If you're interested in blogging, maybe you want to add some affiliate links, you know, links to products, make a little money that way. Or maybe you want to push people out to a website where they can download information from your site, that kind of thing. A basic static HTML website works great and it's super fast. It's super secure. And when you use like GitHub pages or GitLab pages, or in my case, I like to use Netlify pages, that's free. And the only thing you need to buy is a domain name and you can attach a custom domain name to your site and you're good to go. So this is Publii. Think of it as a content management system without all the overhead of WordPress. And I'll show you what I mean. So before we get deeper into Publii, let's just take a quick peek at this because I just want to make sure you understand the difference between static HTML and what you'd be doing in WordPress. So in this case, static HTML is just HTML files, CSS files, cascading style sheets, and some JavaScript. That's it. And it's all going to be rendered client side in your browser. It's not being served up from a database, which means all the pages are going to render much faster. Because when you have WordPress, WordPress is dependent on a database. It's a great content management system. A lot of people use it. But unless you have a really fast, dedicated WordPress host, which can be very expensive, you will find that you'll spend a lot of time trying to optimize pages for speed because WordPress just isn't that fast. WordPress is calling plugins and theme files and include files and functions and JavaScript and fonts and other files, right? So every time you render a page, it's making a lot of calls back to a database, which slows down the time of its page rendering. And when you have slow page times, Google doesn't like that, right? So speed is important. And for a lot of bloggers, you're writing content and you're serving it up so people can read it. And you're not really worrying about building out e-commerce pieces of your site or other pieces or other functionality that has nothing to do with what your core purpose is, which is providing content on a specific niche that you're interested in sharing with other people. So here we are back at Publii. Now, Publii runs locally, so there's lots of ways to generate static HTML. There's Gatsby, there's Jekyll, there's Eleventy, but they all use Markdown languages. And so Markdown languages are sort of the realm of the developer. Well, I'm not a developer, so I needed a tool that was a WYSIWYG tool that worked like a word processor. And so Publii does that and it creates SEO and privacy focused, super fast websites. And that's because static HTML just by its nature is much faster than a site that's being served from a database like WordPress. So with Publii, you download an executable and that executable runs locally on your machine. So everything that you're doing when you're building pages and when you're building blog posts is all done locally. You're not going to be doing it with a product that's out on the cloud where you log in and build it there. This is all done locally. And then when you're done creating the pages or the posts, you push those files out and sync them up with your host, which in my case, I use Netlify pages. So 
I'll just scroll through here a little bit. This is just a bunch of information on Publii. You can go out to getpublii.com and read about it. And then, of course, you can install it on Windows 64-bit, Mac OS, or Linux. So it works on a variety of operating systems. And it's super easy to use. And this is what it looks like once you've loaded it onto your machine. We'll just open up this test site. You can create posts, you can create pages, you can create tags, header and footer menus, add authors, pick themes, set up your site settings. And basically what site settings are going to be are just all those main things that you wanna take care of when you've created a site. You can click out to a server, pick a server tool. So like I said, if you wanna use GitHub pages or GitLab pages or the Google Cloud, et cetera, you can do that. I happen to use Netlify and Netlify pages. It does have some tools and plugins. They're not really plugins, but they're just some additional tools that will help you when you uh, create pages and when you create posts. So let's just bounce out here again. So here are some of the themes that are available comes set up with the simple theme, which I think is fine. If you're more interested in writing content, this is a great theme. It works great. Here's a live preview of it. It's got easy to follow navigation. It's got a header navigation, you know, a nice little hero image. Then it can go into your blog post. If you click on a blog post, this is what a post would look like in Publii. Uh, I like this theme. It's very simple and it's great for people that are focused on writing content. Let me close that. Now they do have paid themes that you can use if you want to. Now this is Netlify. Now to use Netlify pages, you will have to log in and set up a Netlify account. There's a whole bunch of stuff in Netlify that you'll never touch. And that's because if you're a developer, there's a lot of tools in here that you would use. For us, we're just interested in hosting our website files on Netlify pages. Now, I'm not gonna go into Netlify and explain to you how to set it up because Publii has great information on how to do that. So if you're in your website and you're deciding that, hey, I wanna use Netlify pages and you click here, you'll see there's some things that you need to input and you can only get that information from your Netlify account. Now, if you click on documentation, it tells you exactly how to build a static website with Netlify. So if you follow these instructions, you'll be able to sign up, get set up on Netlify, get your first index.html file out there. Uh, you'll be able to know what information you need to pull from Netlify. Uh, for example, if you're going to use Netlify, you need to be able to have the Netlify website URL here. You need the Netlify site ID and you'll need to generate a Netlify token. Well, the instructions that we were just looking at explain how to do all of those things. Now, again, the thing that can get confusing when you do this is there's a lot of different things that you can do in Netlify. And like I said, 90% of them you'll never touch. So that's the only thing that I will say is you wanna read these instructions carefully and follow them step by step. Now, if you've never set up a custom domain name where you've gone into your domain name host and set up your name servers and a C name record and some of those things, that can get a little confusing the first time you do it. But again, there's instructions how to, on how to do that as well. Netlify helps you with that. It's pretty straightforward. There's one little trick that I do wanna share though. Right here, Netlify will give you its own URL for the site that you set up initially. It will give you a site ID, you will generate a Netlify token, and then that will allow you to connect to Netlify pages, and when you sync up your Publii website with Netlify, it'll all get pushed out to Netlify and be available to look at. Now, the one thing I wanna share with you is when you first do this testing, you're gonna use a Netlify URL in here, but when you're done with that and you've actually set up your custom domain name in Netlify, don't forget to switch this over to your custom domain 
and save your settings. That's really important. Let's say I'm going to use my domain MikeShuey.com. So MikeShuey.com will come up. That's being hosted by Netlify Pages. But if I click on my About page or my Contact page, it's going to then revert back to the original Netlify domain name that was set up when I set up my Netlify pages. But if I switch my domain name here to my custom domain, MikeShuey.com, then all the pages will render MikeShuey.com about, MikeShuey.com privacy policy, etc. So just don't forget at the very end to do this because that's a little confusing. It doesn't tell you to do that, but you need to do this. So first, set up your Netlify account. Get your Netlify URL for your website. Put that in here first with a site ID and a Netlify token. Test your connection. Once you've done that, and then you set up a custom domain on the Netlify site, come back into Publii and make sure and add it here. Sorry to be so long-winded about that, but I just don't want you to forget to do that. It's an important step and it's a little confusing if you've never done this before. So again, with Publii, you can do posts. It's got a nice WYSIWYG editor. You can come in, put test post, then you can just write your content here. You can add tags, you can add your SEO information, like a post slug, a title, a meta description, all the things that you would typically do in something like WordPress, you can do here in Publii. Just the important thing again, is when you're setting up your website on Netlify, use this documentation, follow it carefully, and you should have no problems. Now, here's what I will say on a scale of one to 10, if you have no IT background, if you've never done anything with websites before, this will feel like a little bit of a leap, right? It's going to be a little bit more difficult for you. So I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, difficulty maybe a 6 or a 7, because you're going to have to carefully read this documentation and follow the steps. And it's pretty straightforward. If you have some background setting up, you know, your custom domain and setting up domain name servers and C name records, those kinds of things, you, you're not going to have any problem. This will seem pretty straightforward for you. But the real cool thing is GitLab pages are free. So you've got free hosting. Now, there is sort of a fair use policy, right? You can only push so much bandwidth a month. So if you've got a website and you're getting, you know, 5,000 visitors a day, the free Netlify pages will be, work fine for you. Now, if you were to suddenly get 100,000 visitors a day, you're going to be pushing quite a bit of bandwidth then. And you will have to go to a paid account with Netlify that starts at about $19 a month. And that's really not a big deal. And, you know, that would be a great problem to have, right? If you had to pay $19 a month, you know, if you're doing affiliate sales through your site, that kind of thing, and you've got 100,000 visitors a day, pretty sure you can afford $19 a month. But for most of us, we won't have to do that, and our hosting will be free. And the only thing that we're really paying for is our custom domain. And again, there's a ton of documentation on Publii, so it's really, you know, an easy tool to use. I like it a lot. I built multiple websites on top of Netlify pages in the past. And, you know, there's just not an issue from that standpoint. For somebody that just needs to build pure content websites without e-commerce, without the need for a ton of plugins, and you want something that's very secure and very fast, I strongly recommend using static HTML and Netlify pages or GitHub pages or GitLab pages. I think it's just a great way to go, saves you a lot of money. And then if you want to do something like, you know, look at an AI writer, you've got some extra money to spend on an AI writing tool, for example. Like I use seowriting.ai. You know, that's roughly $19 a month, although I do have a 25% discount you can get. I've got a link in the description below. So all I'm saying is, that's going to give you some money for keyword research tools or for an AI writer, and you're not going to be paying it on web hosting. Because here's the deal. 
with WordPress, if you get WordPress hosting and you go in and it's a real low cost, typically that first year you might find something for $2.95 a month, right? But but it's always going to go up at the end of that first year. Most of these rates are introductory rates, and then you're back into anywhere from you know ten to fifteen to twenty dollars a month anyway. Uh, so I really like using static HTML. I like to keep things simple. I like to keep things cheap, and this is one way that you can go. So I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, take care.